So I am lucky enough to be joined by Richard Taylor, who is the co-founder, co-director and creative director of Weta Workshop. So that is really cool. And first of all, thank you so much, Richard. Why creating um, this incredible exhibition for everyone? Well, thank you. It's lovely being with you on the show and catching up with the children and talking about everything Thunderbirds. Well, the show can't be here if it wasn't for the television show, and that was created by Pukeko Pictures in a collaboration with ITV. And this is all due to a childhood dream of one day seeing more episodes of the Thunderbirds, a great love of the original series. I've even got it on my As you can see. And, uh, and wanting to be part of it going into adulthood. Uh, so it's taken an amazing team of New Zealanders and then other people around the world to come together around the Pukeko company to make new episodes for uh, young fans around the planet. So obviously those we've seen, even today, that we've got heaps of young fans that absolutely love the show, but have you noticed some of the older fans of the original series are quite keen on yes. this new series as well? Yes, thankfully you can appreciate that when we put it out to the world that we were going to make a new season, there was some trepidation and doubt from fans of the original show, but I think they, although they may not be thrilled that we're not using marionettes, we're not making it exactly like the original show, I think that uh, they've come to appreciate that we've done the best job we possibly could. We've kept the DNA of the original show and now at conventions around the world fans will stand up and say how much they're enjoying it and that's that's the best you it's can the hope main thing. for. Yeah. Cool. And so I just looking in awe at Tracy Island. Yeah. So I was wondering if you could just show me around the incredible place that is. Yeah, well, the, the whole idea in, uh, in this world is that uh, Jeff Tracy, the father, who we don't meet yet in our, um, in, in our seasons, uh, he, he uh, has built this incredible paradise hideaway. You know, one of the great things about the show is it's all about uncelebrated heroism. You think about today, everyone that, create, that does something, an act of heroism, gets their five minutes of fame. But yeah. these boys, this family of boys who are put in peril every day rescuing others, uh, disappear back into the shadows. Luckily for the Tracys, this amazing island has a huge network of natural underground caverns caused by the volcanic uh, uh, state of the island. So that's where all the craft are hidden. And you can actually see the, hang the, the hangar door, which is hidden in the cliff and the runway for Thunderbird, Thunderbird two. 2. And um, Thunderbird 3's and Thunderbird uh, 1's launch platforms. Of course, it has to just look like a beautiful multi-millionaire's pad. Uh, should someone fly over in an aeroplane. They've even got uh, these uh, indigenous people's village down here oh, just to wow. throw out uh, uh, any uh, prying eyes and then satellite and uh, solar panel uh, arrays up in the cliffs. This is their little rec center and this is where they go to uh, stay fit and jog on their jogging machine. Nice. <laughs> Best view in the, in the world. So Tracy Island was an absolute delight to create. And so how, how long would it take to create the model of Tracy Island? This is probably about a six week build. Uh, probably half a dozen people worked on it. How we make a model like this is uh, rock uh, is a, obviously a natural thing that you see all around the world, all around Wellington. The great fortune for us is that the native rock of Wellington, which is called Grey Wacky, has no scale. What I mean by that is that you can go and mould a piece of rock off the beach in Wellington, and if I put my hand on it, it looks like a one-to-one -one scale piece of rock. It looks like just a normal yeah. size rock. But if I took a tiny little model of a climber and I placed him here, that piece of rock would look like the size of a mountain side. So we're very lucky that the Rock of Wellington gives us a perfect foundation for models like this. And this is exactly the same rock that we used on Lord of the Rings, on uh, The Hobbit, on um, King Kong, etc., etc. And now we're using it on Thunderbirds. And as you can hear, 
it's not rock at all. Not what rock. we actually do is we take a silicon mould and then make urethane copies. And that, that wow. can be then cut with a knife, glued together with glue, and it's very quick to work with. Now, so the other thing is all about the, the camera shots. So if you look at one thing from one angle compared to like a different angle, it completely changes. You're abs absolutely on the button. If the position that we're standing in makes this look like a miniature. But if we come down, so cameraman, follow me here. And if you shoot up this way, you can start to see that the moment that you put your camera at the height of a human's eye line, suddenly something tends to take on the appearance of being much, much larger. So uh, uh, if, we, uh, if we drop the camera down here and look up at the model, it will give that appearance. You can start to see the illusion of scale. Possibly a much more interesting example of that is over here, if you look at Thunderbird 2. So when we're standing Hanger. here, it looks like a toy, because we're yep. looking down on it. But if the cameraman comes in and puts his camera right under the edge of here, and now the vehicle looks massive, and if I'm to put my hand in, it looks completely wrong, yeah. because it now looks like we're looking up at a massive vehicle and a huge cavern above our heads. So camera work becomes critical in how a miniature is uh, shown uh, to be large. And uh, it also comes down to very fine detail. If we look at our own world around us, this room is not too dissimilar to this model that we're trying to build. And when we look at this room, it's a clutter of highly detailed componentry. And that's exactly what we're trying to do when we create things like the girders. This was a commercial toy that we purchased. Uh, and then we've hyper-detailed it, we've put lights on it, we've aged it with paint. That's another really yeah. important thing. Is, um, these are all stuck down, unfortunately. Is aging everything so that it looks old and looks lived in. Yeah. No, it's just, I just think it's the most uh, amazing, amazing thing. Oh, wonderful. So do I. This is, <laughs> for me, this is a magical rabbit hole that you tumble down every day. You know, I, I, I get up in the morning and I know that this is what awaits me coming to work every day, to build things like this, be part of a team that creates amazing things like this. Of course, none of this is possible without that amazing enthusiasm from our team. Uh, mostly a bunch of New Zealanders that come together every day just to build cool stuff. So um, which, let's have a look at uh, Tracy Island House. Now, wouldn't you love to live here? I was going to say, yes. Are we building a, a, um, a life-size life replica in New Zealand anyway? Is yeah, it going to go on the market? Yeah, that would be nice. Let's hope the show's wildly successful and that's <laughs> what we can build. So here's Grandma's kitchen. All right. And you can see there's even food on the plates. Uh, all the stove lights up, her microwave works over there uh, so that she's got pots on the stove and they have to be changed around to show that uh, she's making different meals. The boys come and eat here. All the windows slide to open and close the windows. They're so confident in their own uh, well-being that they don't need a balcony <laughs> rail, as you can see there. I'm sure at New Zealand uh, Health and Safety yeah, will get yeah. onto that really quick. In the original, the uh, Jeff used to sit at the desk, so we've recreated the desk. Uh, and then uh, all of the boys and KO now have uh, their mission paintings that light up. And then their bedrooms, which we visit in a couple of episodes, are sitting up on the top floor there. And of course, it wouldn't be Tracy Island if we didn't have the opening swimming pool. Wow. So this slides back to reveal the hangar underneath. Now, because we're in a studio with a hard floor, unfortunately, it's just a black hole under here. But when we made the episode, we mounted this model on top of that model so that we could start the pushback on this model, and this rolls all the way back. And yep. when it rolled back, it was full of water, of course, so the water's splashing. And then it intercuts with this model here. Wow. And this model also had the underside of the swimming pool that slid clear. 
revealing uh, the ability for the spaceship to take off. A good one. Mm. It's just really cool to see. Um, Kimmy, when she was taking us around the tour, was asked us to see if we could see any lemon squeezes being used. And we can <laughs> see one right here as well. Well, there's lots of things that you'll start to recognise if you look carefully. That is a breathing mask filter there. That's one of the refill filters out of a photocopier that's sitting just there. Uh, lots and lots of the components are found uh, as opposed to us building them because if we had to make every single item it would just become so expensive. Something like this has to be 100% scratch, or completely manufactured because you can't buy this item and you can't buy components for it. But something like this set, you look to buy as many pieces as possible or, or raid them from the junk shops or go to the tip. One of the best um, uh, places for myself and Stephen to go in that first two months was a place called Trash Palace, Trash Palace. which is up in Porirua. And uh, it's where they recycle the rubbish. And Lots and lots of these models are built from Trash Palace. <laughs> I was just thinking, would you be walking, walking um, just down, just down the hall at home, and you just like peer into, the, say, your, your son's room, and be like, "Oh, actually, do you mind if we borrow that? We could use that for the for the show." Well, my wife <laughs> Tanya still, what, twenty seven years later, still brings up the fact that this beautiful wok, Chinese cooking wok, that she had hand beaten on her trip. To, uh, to Australia when she was a teenager. This was the thing she brought back. Yeah. Within a year of us starting our business, I turned into a satellite <laughs> dish for a TV commercial. So absolutely everything can be repurposed at some level. And I suppose that, that's a cool thing for everyone at home as well, that they don't, they don't need to feel as if they can have to go to stores to buy stuff. They can just look around, look at what's recyclable and just use their imagination to create such cool and new things. Absolutely. What I desperately hope will come from this exhibition is a realisation that what happens here isn't magical. It's due to inventiveness and hard work, which anyone can bring. These wonderful things at the end of our arms are primarily there for making things. And if you have got the willingness to give it a go, you can build anything. Look at this model here. This is the top of a plastic rubbish bin. Here is a, a back of an old computer screen. The actual uh, body of the spaceship is made out of old washing machine centers, all free, all just junk that we got from Trash Palace. Uh, you can see there's old computer fans. Computer, yeah. There's uh, lots and lots of sprues. These are the plastic pieces that are left over after you've made a model kit. So these are just pieces of wood that people have just stuck lots and lots of junk on. We wouldn't have bought a single one of these items. Uh, and if they're brought together with thought and care and, and cleverness, you can build something extraordinary like this. Wow. And then in contrast to that model is this model where everything has been built because uh, we want it to look very, very specific. And uh, in this case, Lady Penelope lives in Crichton Ward Manor, and we'll look at that, uh, the outside in a moment. This is her lounge, uh, very trendy. Very. We wanted to find a balance between, uh, sh she's inherited it off her parents, and she's, she's decided to change the decor to suit her modern ways. She has a pet dog uh, called Sherbet that's a pug. And of course she has a painting of, of Sherbet on the wall. And even, and even here's little Sherbet here. In the original show, whenever she got a call from Jeff Tracy, her teapot would light up. Well, in this case, Sherbet's nose actually oh, lights up. That's so cool. But she's serving cakes for a visitor. She's got these lovely little cushions that she's had made up. And we've even created what's called shoot off through this door. There's nothing actually on the other side of the room. And as you can see, just like a film set, there's just a uh, raw piece yeah. of wood. 
but that's so that we can see through the door and see stairs that must be leading up to up her bedroom. To, oh. that it's all about trying to plant things in the imagination of the children that they think that there's more than there actually is. This is Crichton Ward Manor and they, they used this house in the original Thunderbird show and we've recreated it exactly again for this show. And uh, this was a joy to see built. Uh, Stephen Saunders, the head of our um, miniatures team and his group put this together. And for me, <laughs> it's like literally stepping back into your childhood. It's, it's extraordinary. Here's the descendants of uh, pugs have been in the family for a long, long time. So we, we've created a backstory. Uh, you want to create backstories for all your characters to give them a more fully rounded character right down to their pets. So here, here's the uh, father and grandfather potentially or great grandfather of Sherbet and uh, they are marble statues on top of these pillars in the hope that the children will even subconsciously realize that the world exists beyond the two-dimensional nature of, uh, of, of things and are a fully three-dimensional world. So, so would, would um, this be one of the long, like most time-consuming models out of the ones you've got yes. on display here? Because this is 100% scratch built, not utilizing any junk, uh, as so much has been done, it would uh, have taken probably the, there's definitely one of the bigger miniatures in the longest uh, time to build. We've, the, the team have built uh, a huge number of miniatures, maybe three times more than the number used to make the trilogy of Lord of the Rings. Uh, so it's a significant body of work. Yeah. So, um, and of course, that's not to take away from all the digital environments that the digital team that are working just through the wall have also done, which is very exciting. And I suppose, yeah, what is really cool is that there's so much, I suppose, real element compared to that digital, which is what you're talking to um, me before about, I suppose, keeping it as close to the original series we, from we, the start. A real, um, hope of ours was to create a television show recreating the essence of the Thunderbirds utilizing real environments through the use of miniatures so that the world that the children are watching on television doesn't just appear to be digitally fabricated there's nothing obviously there's great and beautiful movies that are a hundred percent digitally made it's not that that is a negative we just didn't want our world to be like that. We wanted the children to realize their miniatures. We're not trying to suggest that this is a photorealistic world that the, the, the children are um, uh, uh, sort of uh, cheated into thinking yeah. that they're full size. We want the children to see them as, as what they are. So they likewise, like I did as a child, went, wow, I might be able to build that. I might be able to create that with my hands. One day I might be able to run a company that does this for a living. And if you can get children to see that the magic is in the craft, then you've got something special. And that's what this has all been about. Yeah, cool. Well, hey, thank you so much, Richard, You're for welcome. talking. And I think everyone at home and myself are going to be just keen to just get straight into finding near our um, local junkyard i suppose yep. seeing what we can get our hands on to grab and start building so. just look in the recycling bin every week select a few old bottles a hot glue stick or two and you'll create wonders easy just so, like that thank you to you all and i hope you enjoy our further episodes of the thunderbirds what now? Sundays from 8 a.m. On 2.